Welcome to Music Alive North Shore, your live in-home concert cable TV show. I'm Paul Norman, and I'm hopefully providing you with an opportunity to enjoy some live music in your home by presenting some of the best North Shore musicians in the area. This is a local access cable show, and we're currently airing in Wakefield, Stoneham, Beverly, Danvers, and North Andover, and hopefully in a few months we'll be able to expand that to more towns in the North Shore region. Now, as, all you, as you all know, one of the unfortunate consequences of the COVID crisis is we've lost the ability to go out and hear live music at clubs and venues, something we've all enjoyed. Not only has this deprived us of something that's been important in our lives, but it's had devastating economic impacts on the clubs, the venues, and the performers that uh, play there. Music Alive North Shore hopes to be able to bring you that fun music into your home while we all wait for the hopeful reopening of the clubs and the concert venues. I'm excited to present to you uh, today's performers, Rick Campbell and Friends. Uh, they're some of the best musicians in the North Shore. You may have seen them on some of the stages in the North Shore, and their original music is a lot of fun. So sit back, relax, or get up and dance to the fun tunes of Rick Campbell and Friends. Show us what you got. and love goes and Wait. 
This is what happens when you listen to the voices in your head. Right? Ah, yes. My favorite trick. What is it called? This is called Endless Margaritas. So 
This one came from. I was in a bar. My friend was talking about the end of his first marriage. He was living in Austin, Texas, and uh, things split up. He moved back northeast, and uh, he was eventually talking to his soon-to-be ex-wife. And he said to her, uh, "You know, what do you think about me moving, you know, back down to Austin?" And she said, "If you come back to Texas." Don't come back for me. And I said, if you're not going to write that song, you know, hold my beer, I will. So uh, he let me have that one. He's a great songwriter, too, but he, uh, he let me have that one. She screamed she didn't love me. She ordered me out 2,000 miles away. I could still hear her shout. The Lone Star State was my home. I didn't want to leave. She said, if you come back to Texas, don't come back for me. I'd love to change her mind, but I know she'll never budge. She used to hold me tight. She'll hold tighter to that grudge. Reluctantly, I left her. Said if you 
Introduce the band on lead guitar. We got Leadfoot Sam Markson. Maybe we should call the band, you know, uh, Sam Markson and the Markups. Uh, on the drums, we got Phil Delane. You know, you need a drummer named Phil, a guitarist named Noise, and a bassist named Low. Alas, we don't have that. But I do have a bassist named Emma Campbell. Strangely enough, she uh, shares the same last name as me. Not sure how that happened. Should we call the band the Emma Campbell Experience? How about fill in the blanks? <laughs> that was a band. This is called Sticky. It's Sticky. What a sticky situation. Hot and sticky. Sticky situation. You like love and danger slipping out the back when the front door slam Mysterious stranger loving all the women hated by the men You can't last forever coming on a day when you get so Now you ain't what you once was Didn't hear the husband come through the door It's sticky What a sticky situation Been greedy, sticking around for just a little more fun. Won't you tell me, was it worth it now that you're looking at the barrel of a gun? You made a bad decision, hating on yourself because you didn't believe. Now you found religion, praying to a God who you never be. a tune called Make Some Time for Love. Hot is on 
some, make some, some, make some time for love. Make some, make some, make some, some, make some time for love. Make some, make some, make some, some, make some time for love. Make some, make some, make some, some, make some time for love. She's too tired and busy. Woman's hunger. song for a current times. This is called Don't Double Down on a Bad Bet. You got a chance to do it over. This time do it right. You can fix a mistake you made four years ago tonight. Don't do something you'll regret I'm begging you, brother, please Don't double down on a bad bet You think you've got the trump card You swear it's a winning hand But that man, he's playing a game He don't Don't do something you regret I'm begging you, brother, please Don't double down on a bad bet Please. 
too, right? All right. All right. It's a good thing I have my editor here to help me out. All right. For all the women who love Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Since it's not on draft with a few barroom buddies to share a laugh. This ain't real life, it's just a bad, fuzzy photograph. So I'll make myself another drink or two. Got the lockdown. Thank you. 
All right, my friend Sam gets to sing one. Sam, Sam introduced me to a friend. And uh, this guy caught the bug bad. He was uh, on a ventilator for what, almost two months, right? 57 days. Yeah. And he did come out of the hospital. He is an avid motorcyclist who uh, refers to getting on his bike and tearing around his wind therapy. And man, if that's not a song title, then I ain't a songwriter. But it is. And I am. <laughs> So we got one more song for you. And um, drummers are weird people. My friend Dave Thompson is a drummer, and he's weird. But they think of things in terms of grooves. And he says to me one day, hey, we don't do any songs with a Texas shuffle kind of feel. And I probably looked like a deer in the headlights thinking, oh, man, please don't make me play Pride and Joy. Great song. Love you, Stevie. But... Um, I really don't think another bar band needs to play that. You guys remember bar bands, right? You guys remember bars? <laughs> you guys remember social lives? Anyhow, I said to Dave, hold my beer, and I wrote a Texas Shuffle song about driving across Texas. This is called Long Straight Line.
with Sam Markson. I'm Rick Campbell. Thank you all for listening. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the great set of music that we just heard as much as I did from Rick Campbell and friends. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes uh, to talk with Rick about uh, the performance today. So, Rick, thanks so much for joining us. That was a lot of fun. We had a, we had a great time working up the set and, and uh... I kept throwing new tunes at the guys and girls, and you know they they rose to it. It was fun. Thank well, you. I know you put a lot of rehearsal time into it. it it's kind of interesting to hear that uh, your repertoire was building over time as uh, you're getting ready for the performance. Um, you know, it was uh, fantastic to have you guys here with us today. Um, you know, obviously, it's been very hard for uh, entertainers performers, uh, our audience to replace the live music that's been such an important part in their life. Mm -hmm. And um, I know uh, this has probably had a pretty significant impact on uh, your ability to get out and have fun and play gigs. Um, so tell us a little bit about what things have been like in this uh, corona world that we're living in. Well, I'm, I'm fortunate, I guess, in that I don't try to make a living at it. Those guys are, are hurting badly. Um, I'm really just a weekend warrior. Um, and there's a, you know, I guess there's a lot more time for me to uh, spend in the basement writing and recording and being creative. Well, a perfect example of that is that uh, Rick wrote the theme song for Music Live North Shore. So That's true. Um, that was a, a basement creation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it shows, uh, you know, it's a great example of 
um, you know, how you're uh, using your musical skills in ways that are different than what you've uh, done in the past. Yeah, that was weird. I hadn't written a uh, really rock-centered thing in 35 years. Well, it came nice. out fantastic. I think that uh, it's gotten our show off to a great start. Now, have you found that um, you've had, um, you've been more creative uh, and inspired from a creativity perspective more than in the past? Uh, or has, the, uh, has that not really changed too much since we've been in this uh, COVID uh, crisis? Well, I'm, I'm always hashing ideas for new songs, but certainly, you know, I wouldn't have written Lockdown Quarantine Blues if it wasn't for the situation we're in. And yeah. coming up on the electric elec election year, uh, I would not have uh, written uh, Double Down on a Bad Bet. Yeah, don't you know? double down on a bad bet for yeah. sure. <laughs> exactly. But, you know. Well, it's, uh, it's interesting to see how, um, like you said, you've been able to generate some new music. And uh, I'm glad that we had... Um, an opportunity to showcase that and create a venue and an opp opportunity for you to share that with um, our audience. Yeah, this place is fun. It sounds great, you know. It was a blast playing here. Great. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the artists that uh, inspired you, um, have had an influence on your playing style, uh, your compositions, the um, obviously, I know the blues has uh, sort of been important for you, but have there certain artists in particular that have had more of an influence than others? It would be too, too long a list. Okay. But, yeah, but we the, guy, all day. The, the guy who made me pick up the guitar was Jimi Hendrix, having seen him in a terrible movie called Rainbow Bridge. Um, if, if you see the movie, just fast forward to the end when Hendrix plays. There's nothing else worth watching. <laughs> It was the guy who got me to play, and you know, as a kid, I was lucky enough to see Albert King and BB King uh -huh. live in person. Um, Luther Allison. Um, I didn't get to see Muddy Waters. I had opportunities to, and I don't know. Maybe I thought he was going to live forever. He sure looked like it. Yeah. Um, and then a whole slew of rock guys too. But you know, mostly today, what I focus on is bluesy, sort of centered stuff. Yeah, that's where it comes out of. Uh huh. Yeah, it, um, you know, it's interesting to hear, um, you know, how many people uh, have been inspired by B.B. King and, and Buddy Guy and, you know, those, those guys, uh, you know, it's almost like the Bill Belichick coaching tree. There's just so many people that have learned from the masters uh, that have made, um, you know, such a huge contribution to the, all the music that we love to hear, the Eric Clapton's of the world, for example. Yep, liked him too. Yeah. I think that's that, in terms of, the, I wasn't playing yet, but I remember someone had a, a, a friend had an older brother and they brought over a record by Cream. And I really liked it. And, and the guy looked at it me almost apologetically. He says, yeah, there's a lot of sort of bluesy stuff on here, you know. I'm like thinking to myself, why is he apologizing? This sounds great. Yeah. You know, I grew up in Chicago, so. It was kind of a, a big blue shadow there, you know. Mm, exactly. Yeah, it's one place that I haven't been and, you know, I enjoy so, music so much and I'm afraid I may have missed the opportunity to experience the, the blues music scene, at least in the near term of Chicago. Well, you can always go back. We, we won't be locked up forever. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so let's talk. You mentioned that uh, Jimi Hendrix... Um, inspired you. Let's talk a little bit about um, uh, your music early in your life. Uh, what do you, how did you start uh, on this musical journey? Um, I started on violin at age 10 and I didn't like it. But um, yeah, I remember there were other kids who did and you know, they used to tell us, we want you to practice a half hour a day and I'd set a timer when that thing went ding, you know, boom, violin back in the case. But at, when I was 16, that's when I saw the, that movie with Jimi Hendrix in it, and that's when it changed. It's like, uh, oh, maybe this music thing is fun. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, I know that you've had um, some training at some of the best, uh, some of our best music schools. Um, 
you uh, went to Berkeley for a little bit. Is that right? Yeah, I did my four years. I was released on good behavior. Okay, good. And that's what brought me out to, to uh, the Northeast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And I stayed. You stayed here. I did. Okay. Um, you know, I was, I'm curious to know, how were you able to convince your daughter, Emma, yeah. that playing in dad's band is not such a bad thing? <laughs> I don't know that I had to convince her. She started playing when she was around 10 or 11, and within a year or so, I had her going to bars and playing with me. It was probably an unusual way to grow up. <laughs> but, you know, she took to her instrument really, really quickly. Uh -huh. And so she was able to be in a position where we can go out to a jam, and I would call three or four friends, hey, I'm bringing them. We're going to do these songs, you know, be ready. Yeah. And uh, it gave her a lot of experience. Um, playing with older, more more skilled musicians. Sure. Once in a while, she'd play with someone who wasn't that good, and then I'd have to listen to it all the way home. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's a. I'm sure that accelerated her musical skill development. She be, yeah. was really playing great today uh, for someone that's um, you know uh, less experienced than some of the other members of your band. Uh, yeah, so she's that's about a third of the age of some of us, half the age of others. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's wonderful. And she plays a whole lot of different styles. She played in uh, Boston College's big band, played oh. upright bass. Okay. Um, and she's had some great teachers. Marty Hayden of Quality Music Lessons and Lenny Bradford, um, who has played with pretty much everybody. You know, and her uh, middle school band director, Pat Motion. Just so many great people who are in her corner. Well, I think nice. it's so wonderful when you can share some uh, a skill and a, something you're passionate about with your children. It really uh, is adds a lot to their life and uh, mm -hmm. and yours as well. It's um, it's something that I've had a chance to experience a little bit, not quite as much as you. And I think that uh, really is a nice bond, and I'm glad that um, it's been something that uh, you and she have really enjoyed. It made the teenage years very peaceful. Well, that's another <laughs> great benefit. Well, I want to thank you again so much for being with us today. Uh, the music was fantastic, and uh, I hope that um, you know things uh, get back to normal in the not too distant future. But if they don't, uh, I would like to suggest that you start working on a few more songs, and we can get you back here. Uh, to entertain us again. I will do so. Thank All you. All right. Thanks so much.